We're I'm live. Milford, oh, we are live. Wait, Can't. What? Think, thanks for maybe a heads up next time. This is every every podcast. It's a oh, we're live and we're just <laughs> we're not ready to be live. But I'm ready. This is live. this is episode what? I'm not even talking. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not ready to be live. <laughs> um, episode sixteen, seventeen. Right? Is it seventeen? Oh, Jordan was fifteen. And Miles was 16. This is 17, I think. I don't know. Something like that. This is 17. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're here in Tampa. We just drove from Miami. Trip was about four and a half hours. We cut it down to three something. And uh, I'm a sleepy bear today, bro. <laughs> we are. We're here with Mr. Andre Heichel. Heichel? Yeah. What, what? Whatever. However. You oh, okay. Say it. All right. And you and I have a lot of history. Yeah, bro. You, we, you and I go romantic. <laughs> <laughs> you and I go way back though, and yeah. we met in was it 2018? Yeah, it was 2018, and you had a podcast. Yeah, so tell us about that. Yeah, bro. So I was thinking on the way over here. So Nick and I met in 2018 in upstate New York. Uh, funny enough, so Nick was you're from Syracuse. I'm from a town like an hour south, and. We started a podcast. So Christian, who was my podcast co-host at the time, we're on Instagram starting a podcast in school, trying to find entrepreneurs uh, that we could like relate to that were in online business and, and just interested in entrepreneurship and, and doing cool things online. And you were running, I think, what was it? Business Driven Dream at I the had, time? I was still drop shipping and I had started a couple Instagram accounts and that was the first one that had taken off. Yeah, and and I kind of like showed it to you, and and, me- and I think I actually messaged you on Twitter first because I saw you guys on Instagram. Yeah, and then I messaged you on Twitter. I was like, oh, I think these guys are local, kind of. I'm gonna reach out to them, and see, like just I'm gonna I'm gonna network with them. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, Bro, I just reached out. Yeah, we had no idea what we were doing. Honestly, it's, it's cool sitting here now, like on your podcast, like what four years later, because I'm pretty sure that was our first ever in person podcast. It never got released, sadly. I think the files the still somewhere. audio was super messed up. Super fucked up. Yeah, it was it was bad. But we ended up sneaking into like my family company's headquarter office to do the podcast yeah. in like a conference room. Nice. It was pretty badass. Did, did you have a were you doing something online at the time or just podcasting? No, I've always been interested in entrepreneurship because my dad uh, was like an immigrant from Lebanon and dropped out of school and just went all in on entrepreneurship. So like I grew up around entrepreneurs. And so, like, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and I didn't have an idea to start an online business. So I said, I'm just going to go and interview people that are already doing it through a podcast. And that was the idea for the podcast. And Nick reached out right away. Was the podcast like an attempt to make money or was it an attempt to like grow a brand or was it an attempt to just like meet people? to, To learn. So I was in school at the time and I was just not interested at all in what we were learning in school, like university. Um, and so the podcast, we literally called it Real Talk University. It was kind of like our grudge against college in a way. And the number one goal for, for Christian and I were just to learn about how, how are people having success outside of the classroom? And we were just curious at the time. And it kind of spiraled into, oh, shit, like there's opportunities here for us to, to make money and, and learn marketing. And this is uh, like Christian, Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Burner Bottle Burner Christian. Bottle Christian, bro. I was just going to say that. Christian. <laughs> yeah. Collecting jerseys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we yeah, met in the school. Jersey. The way we met is crazy. So uh, the first, like, one of the first, like, online business opportunities I was ever a part of was, like, Forex trading. Um, and we we're in, like, yeah, it's crazy. So I used to post this shit, like, great niche. Like, did, you saw, did you see one of the you Yeah, know, the I just got bots? into, like, the, you know, the, the funnels that are out there. You know, I was I I didn't know better at the time. But anyways, I was posting on my Instagram story trying to get other people interested. Like, yo, you want to make money from your home? Uh, like, just all you need is a phone and, and a Wi-Fi connection, right? <laughs> and so Christian was he found me through like a Facebook group of like Binghamton University upcoming students, and he swiped up and he's like, yeah, I want to make money from my phone. And so we ended up meeting uh, at school in the first week when we got there, and and that was really it. We started the podcast and. Just wanted to learn, like, what can we do? Like, how can we leverage our, our skill sets and our network? And so so now, fast forward four years, you have an online business. You want to talk a little bit about just like, you know, nothing, I saw the I saw the whole backstory. Of nothing that. crazy, it's, but just like, you know, kind of walk people through like what the kind of progression looked like. You know, you don't have to go into super detail, but like just so people have some context. Yeah, bro. By the way, this shit is heavy. 
<laughs> I'm like holding the shit. Yeah, gotta start it. working out. Yeah, yeah, I, know, gym, I got it, bro. I got it. Like this shit's heavy. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah. The, so the story is like we started the podcast. Uh, we got some really big name guests on, and it was really cool. Like looking back at it, uh, the way we got big name guests on the show is through cold email. So we'd go to Instagram, and at the time, like Instagram had a button on their profile that said "send email" or "view their email." It's still there. Yeah. I, I I got depends it on, on depends if you make it live on your okay. account. Yeah. yeah. So everyone had their emails on there. So Christian and I would just take the email and write them a little script. And the the, the hack back then was sending the cold emails from our .edu email accounts because people are more empathetic to college students. Yeah, that's was, so funny. It was a hack. So like we were going back the other day and we had email conversations with guys like Brad Lee, uh, people from Tony Robbins team, like some really big name entrepreneurs. We did an interview in Gary Vee's office in New York City, had a steak dinner with Rob Gronkowski, like crazy experiences through cold email. And it just got to the point where we weren't making any money and we just kept talking to people that were making money and we we're like, we need to do something. Um, and so we kind of looked at what skills have we developed so far. Uh, and it was just marketing, social media, marketing and cold email. Uh, and we just kind of got into like the agency rabbit hole from there. Did you go to LinkedIn first? And I think I mentioned to you, yeah. dude, you got to check out this guy called Email Wizard on uh, yeah, Twitter. Because I think it'd be like congruent with what you guys are doing with cold outreach or something. Yeah. So I think uh, so we got started with like online coaching programs through LinkedIn. We we're helping knowledge experts or yeah, people that already had an existing brand on LinkedIn to monetize that audience through coaching programs. You, you, so you were doing what I was doing on IG. Exactly. And that's why we, we stayed connected. And you actually yep. gave me the idea. I don't know if you remember this, but Nick and I played a lot of golf uh, in Syracuse. And we'd get a lot of ideas just from those uh, those rounds. One of the ideas that was a big breakthrough was the performance offer, where you charge a percentage of whatever revenue the program did. Yep. Um, and so we ran with that. Uh, and did really well with it and then uh going back to you said linkedin right yeah so linkedin was like your thing and i was yeah. like dude you gotta get on twitter like i don't yeah. know what you're doing on LinkedIn. so we were playing at enjoy it was like a, a course <laughs> back in binghamton and we were golfing i remember this we were on like the ninth hole or something you're like yeah you gotta talk to this guy called email wizard on twitter i'm like who the who <laughs> <laughs> wizard what <laughs> he's like yeah dude he, he's doing i think he was doing cold email for you at the time uh, through his very agency. briefly he didn't really have an agency like much. yeah he, he like scaled it down and yeah whatever. he just he's known for the the actual like the info product right so yeah you yep. put me on to him uh i ended up buying his course like everyone else that was uh in 2019 and of 2019 i think so like three years ago or two years ago maybe um yeah. went through his course he he came out with like this private program or private group uh and i got in that and just started providing value established a connection with him uh, and we ended up collabing on uh, his his second info product, which was called The Vault, uh, which did like six figures. In, and in I, I think days. I want to I stop you there. I think for, like for anyone listening, because we have a bunch of like young entrepreneurs, whatever, like yeah, in yeah. the space. That's a really important point is like you were still like figuring out your kind of path and then you figured it out. And from like you partnered with the person that you learned from yeah. because you brought value to the table. To you that. didn't try to leech from the constantly from like the the network and stuff you actually brought some value to the table that added things it's super interesting to think about that because that's I anyone mean, could have done that well especially like i've leveraged that with a lot of my team now like i have those people that now are a part of what i'm doing too you know they came in they were part of the community um you know the, whether they were a client or whatever and now we work together in some capacity or they, you know, do stuff for one of the businesses, you know, it's just like mm -hmm. a really good route actually to just kind of do that. And, and if you like, if you got it and you put your head down and like work, like people are willing to work with you. Yeah. And we're willing to work with people that like have got it. And we're about to announce something soon kind of in regards to that. But yeah, I just <laughs> want to make that point. And so now you guys, so you guys partnered up on the vault yep. and it did six figures in 30 days, yeah. which is gas and <laughs> yeah, so now you sure. and so where did it progress from there you had your agency at that time yeah so we were still running our agency so that was like the thing with daniel is is he was all about the info product did, world did it change to lead gen yet yeah so it well so it's it was always lead gen uh but it was it was mostly focused on uh linkedin at the time uh and then we made the progression to just go all in on cold email uh and pivoting away from linkedin 
but yeah, Daniel's always been big on the, the info products. We've always been big on the agency. Uh, and so we kind of just, we're planning actually another launch of an info product uh, after the vault because it did so well. And we we're kind of like going back to our previous experiences with like coaching programs. And we we're like, we should just go high ticket. Like we're running an agency. You have the audience and the marketing experience to draw people to a funnel. Like, why should we mess around with these low ticket products when we could just do a high ticket program? And, and so that was the idea for client ascension, uh, which was to show people how to start their own agencies and to teach them cold email as the source to get clients. Uh, and, and yeah, that, that was about a year and a, a year ago, mm -hmm. around a year ago. And now you guys are just fucking crushing it. So we're here in, in Tampa for your guys' event. Yeah. Um, how yeah. many people are coming? <clears throat> yeah. So the event's crazy, man. So even going back to the podcast, we were listening to clips like this is something we've always wanted to do is, is there's a common theme with what I see everyone in our space uh, wanting, which is to bring people together, which is what you guys do so well with your podcast. Like you've what traveled to how many different mm -hmm. cities to do episodes? I mean, and it's just started kind of to do episodes. <laughs> Kind of, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, there's other benefits, right? Um, for sure. But like, that's cool, man. Like you're bringing people together and you're like, you're building a, a community really. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, this event uh, is really like, we had a lot of success with Client Ascension so far this year. We've enrolled a lot of students, have, a, have had a lot of success stories, right? Scott's back there. He's now working with us full time and he got started in our program just a few months ago. Uh, and so we wanted to put on this event to just bring people together in real life because everything is, is online. Mm. Um, and it's really, you don't like, you'll feel the energy this week is very different than what you feel in, in say like a zoom rumor on a Twitter sure. DM. Um, and that's what of really course, yeah. like drives us. And I think that for us is, is the next tier, right? We've done the, the six figure months with our coaching program. Mm -hmm. How can we make this even bigger, um, and, and attract more people? And I think the event is like a legitimacy factor. Super, le this absolutely a legitimate legitimacy factor. It's uh, I'm really excited for it. Um, yeah, I just can't wait. Think it's super cool to see all the people from our space that are actually building things mm -hmm. and real businesses start to have their kind of moments where they ex not exit the space, but they become bigger than the space itself. And it's all these guys that are older than us that we maybe look up to a little bit, like Becker and Hormozy and these other people that are done their things and had their events they probably had those similar moments so it's really cool to start to experience it for ourselves yeah dude yeah i think the event thing is is really interesting um because we've been in i mean money twitter right we always talk about money twitter it's like a little pocket of, of twitter and we've been i mean how long has money twitter been around for i mean logan's been there for for quite he's just struggling with a cigar over there but <laughs> <laughs> i think he's good um <laughs> my shit's not even uh, how long has it been around for it's been around a while i think but, but there's always been these spaces of people just talking on the internet like we mentioned it on a podcast or two ago i think with jordan the youtubers have their space the instagrammers yeah. are kind of just out there the twitter guys have their space <clears throat> the facebook guys have their space for sure yeah with the groups and, and I, I think these communities have always been there but I do think as the internet continues to mature, it's becoming more and more real where you start to meet people from the internet that you kind of collab with and know. And everyone I've met is pretty, pretty cool. Pretty in, cool. In person, yeah. like, and just gets it. Um, so how long has it been around? It's been around for a long time. And, and so that's the thing, right? So Money Twitter has been around maybe for a couple of years. And like, I... It's, actually, it's been around a long time, actually. A long time. Because it started as basically, like, when I think of money Twitter, it's really the the evolution of, like you know. Self-improvement? Uh, yeah, like <clears throat> self-improvement. Um, it's like the, the correlation of self-improvement, like the, the red pill, like pickup artist guys. Like, those guys really founded the space, actually. It's self-improvement, um, like pickup artist, red pill guys, and then, what's the other one? Like, right wing people. Because those people actually paved the way for it to start, really. You know, guys like the, you know, like the old pickup dudes. Uh, like Jason God. Capital is one of them. No. Or even no, further no, back? No. No, way further. It's like, it's, it actually started in like 20 for, De 2014. Definitely not Jason Capital. Guys like, <laughs> definitely no, it's not like Jason guys like Cernovich. Yeah. Oh, okay. Had like Danger in Play. Um, guys. Z guys Zuby, kind of? No. He's newer? Yeah, not Zuby. He. He, just, just, he blew up in like 2020. Oh, really? Um, not Zuby. It's so like Cernovich and yeah. Danger in Play. Um, 
it was, you know, like the guys like Rational, Rolo or Rational Rouge, Mail, yeah. um, and all those kind of guys, like the So Suave Forum people. Um, Even Tate. And then like the right wing kind of yeah. internet too. And they just conglomerated. And once those big guys started monetizing, that's what birth money Twitter, I guess, is like those, that niche of people found internet monetization and started leveraging it and the rest is his fucking brought it to twitter yeah so that so that's my thing right is like money twitter has been around for a long time there's a lot of people involved and i still can't recall an event like an in-person event but this is this is so much bigger than just money twitter like definitely definitely like i mean i don't don't really different spaces sure like money twitter whatever but like i feel like you start to define it like that you kind of confine yourself to this box of the internet and you don't want to you don't want to do that because like you can find similar people on YouTube and Instagram and arguably even, you know, Facebook and TikTok that are arguably potentially better customers and better connections than Twitter. Yeah. And that's something I want to talk about tomorrow too. When we go on our panel is like, you know, all the guys that you have here, like they all do lead gen or email or like basically they they find ways to make customers more sales. Right. Yep. And I feel like, you know, I obviously have an internet business focused on marketing, but like, I don't, you wouldn't, that's not what, maybe what you first think of when you think of me or my brand and things like that. And I feel like all of these people too, not embracing themselves as just, you know, marketing or, or internet business or whatever their mechanism for bringing people more sales is like, that's how you win. That's cause that's how you grow. That's how you reach a big audience. If you do, if you have, you know, three hobbies, like maybe you, surf and you play tennis and you love to play chess right like there's so much you can meet so many people and honestly like create um you start operating in a category of one and people can't compete with you because people are going to like you for those things and it's just so much extra like top of funnel traffic there's there's a great example of this i just vividly think of there's this guy in thailand he talks about thailand talks about bjj and he talks about internet money. That's all he talks about. He's got his three things, but no one else can compete with him because he's just so unique. He's just doing his thing in his corner. He's not big yet. I think he will continue he growing. Will blow up. But yeah. he has that uniqueness factor. And people know him for the money stuff, but they also know him for the other stuff. And they're like, wow, this guy's super dope. He's I, him. He's not right. what he does. And I feel like a lot of people start to they they emulate others and they box themselves into this corner of I'm going to grow followers based on I do lead gen or I do this certain thing and that's all they talk about and whatever and at that point you're just like an infographic page to me yeah there's no you need there's no personality to the brand which is is what I'm hearing yeah yeah which yeah. is important yeah and that's the cool <laughs> thing I mean we we're here last night right and it was kind of like an informal meetup before our event we had maybe 30 or so guys out on the patio yeah. and I'm going up to everyone, thanking them for coming uh, and just learning about the different businesses they're running. And it's cool. Like it opened even my mindset to, to be like, like do it different, right? Like there are so many different routes you can take mm-hmm. that'll place you here and, and you'll end up here. And so, like you said, you don't have to start a lead gen agency. You don't have to just confine yourself to marketing. Like, do what is unique to you and double down on it's that super interesting because it every person that we have on and we talk to about online business because we're all like online business space we all had like a couple different things that we tried before we found like the one thing you know you had the pod and then you had the linkedin stuff and i know you had another business partner that ended up like leaving or something and that was a whole other thing um and we can talk about that too. Yeah, I want to talk about that for a second. So uh, again, I was just kind of thinking about way back when Nick and I first got connected. Uh, so this is the thing, right? Like we've all been in this space for a long time now. And I feel like just now, a lot of us are coming up on on like real success, mm-hmm. real money. Which yeah. Big cool. numbers, yeah. Like big numbers. Um, but that's not like an overnight thing, right? I've known Nick for three or four years. Uh, you've been in this space long enough as well. Uh, and so like, a big thing that I always talk to people about is like the patience game of like your time will come. Right. And so, uh, my journey, at least I had an agency going during, uh, COVID during the pandemic with an older business partner and, and it just didn't end well. Uh, so we had gotten that up to, uh, some pretty decent numbers, like better than we've ever had, uh, or personally from my experience ever seen. Um, and that split. And that was really tough for me to like, have the motivation to keep going because I had built something up for so long, poured a lot into it, and and it just kind of disappeared one day. 
because of a, a business relationship. Um, so I was struggling. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do next. Uh, and so I hit up Nick and Nick really helped me to change my mindset. Right. He, he told me something. And I also relayed this to you. And you I forgot. I forgot telling you this. I forgot this cool. conversation. So Nick was just telling me, like, dude, I'm excited for you. And I'm like, dude, what do you what? Like this sucks like this. Mm -hmm. I just got fucked. Like I just lost my, the business I've been building for two years. He goes, dude, like you have a clean slate. Like you have an opportunity to build something like from scratch day one. And, and those opportunities don't come often. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, like, damn, like looking back to all the skills I've acquired through all the lessons and failures, like I have what it takes to go build something for myself. And that's what I did. And you recently went through something similar. Mm -hmm. uh, and I reminded you of that. And we were I just having a conversation. Was I was telling you about it. You reminded me. I was like, wow, that's a, that's a great reminder. And I, we're really taking advantage of it right now. Yeah, uh, definitely. And the, I think the message there is just don't be afraid to start from zero. Um, and especially when you have skills and not like I was starting from zero or you were starting from zero, yeah. but we had those, we had those skills and just like put them into the new thing. And it just, it takes off because you know what you're doing kind of. And to, it's, to a degree. it's, it's the, the skills is one thing. Um, what I think is even more valuable, uh, is the connections in the community. Again, like I had built up so many connections in so many different spaces, uh, that I could reach out to for support and help and guidance. And I think that's what pushed me to where I'm at now. It's, it's always other people, uh, that have kind of directed me on my journey. Like Nick, of course, is a, is a big part of that. <clears throat> Um, and I'm sure we'll end up doing something together. We talked a little bit about it before the yeah, podcast. It's very sure. congruent. And one thing on yeah. that is, uh, you know, I think too, like I always tell like clients and I know you guys are super huge on like social proof. Right. And like, I always think about it is once you get a certain result or you get someone else, a certain result like that lives with you forever. No one can take it from you. You know, once I have a guy that I've helped lose 30 pounds or a guy that I've helped get out of pain and dunk for the first time or a guy that helped, you know, grow really fast and, and build an offer that does well and he makes a lot of money, like you can't take that from us, you know? And that to me is like one of the the biggest things. And I, I want to circle back too. Because at a certain point on that note, you've seen too much. Yeah, you just know too much. too much. And if you just put your mind on a new opportunity or whatever, it just works. It just happens. These matches suck, by the way. These matches they're, they're suck. They're not the best. They're not the best. Um, but I want to I wanna circle back because you mentioned, you know, talking to Nick. And I think it's, you know, we're here in your guys' spot, right? Um, yeah. Where you guys come smoke cigars. The headquarters. And it's a dope, it's a really dope spot. You know, you got the stained glass windows and stuff. It feels holy in here. And, uh, and even more so than that, like you guys have your company – in in tampa and before daniel moved up here you know he was kind of like he was like in our little circle yeah in miami of like the guys that were just around a lot and i think that you know as we talk about the event and you know you guys talking back and forth like man that community that you build in the relationships it's like we had a funny someone reposted a clip of of us when daniel was on the pod and it's like you you know, it's impossible. I said something like it's impossible to lose. You said, yeah. where can I see talk to Daniel? Where can I talk to Nick? Besides these matches suck. Where can I talk to <laughs> Daniel? Where can I talk to Nick? Where can I talk to all these guys besides here? Yeah, it's not it's, it's not really these networks like in it's, person. It's crazy to have that tight knit group around you. That's just all the time focused on building and doing things and and getting better at what they're doing. And it's just like so it's such an asset. You know, because it's when you have things like that happen, because they always happen. Everybody has bad weeks, bad months, whatever. But when you have the people around you who are just like in it, doing it, it's uh, it's really hard to. It's hard to fuck up, right? Yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> it really makes it hard. If, if like we lost everything, you know, so many people where it's just like, dude, I, I need a sales job right now or whatever. Like you lost everything. No investments, no business. You can't support yourself. Do I need a sales job right now? You get it next day because people just know you and trust you because you just you've built those connections. Yeah, you, I, you can't lose at this point. I got Skills a question. The connections. I got a question for you. Is does it feel kind of surreal? Like we first met and I saw you when you were just starting. Yeah. And I had already kind of gotten going to a degree. I, I was already like making things work at that point. But is it surreal to you to like? You started with the podcast and now three, four, four years later, after we met, you're here on my podcast, just chatting, 
whatever, and you yeah, got a dude. big business that's doing great. Dude, it's very surreal. Um, I mean, last night was big for me. Uh, that shit's about to catch on fire. Um, last night was 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 cool for me to see because we had so many people here, um, and it was yeah, it was just kind of reflecting, especially thinking uh, of this morning coming on this podcast, just knowing Nick for how long I've known him. Um, it, it's really cool, man. Like we did the podcast four years ago, like you said, uh, and, and the journey has been pretty crazy since then. Uh, like a lot of failures, a lot of fuck ups, a lot of learnings, met a lot of people, uh, lost a lot of friends. Like it's been a lot, uh, but like, it's all been really worth it. Um, it, it's, it's really cool to think about. Uh, but again, like if I were to go back and attribute like why I'm sitting here today, it's because of the skills I've built and the people I've met. And you just didn't stop. And I didn't stop. Yeah, there was not like a, I was thinking, bro, like I didn't give myself a break even after that first business kind of collapsed. Like there was not a pause. Um, I just kept going. It's the consistency of it all as well. Showing well, we, up every day. What was it like growing up in New York for you and being in an even smaller town that I was than I was in? So, it. I mean, I loved it. I, I thought I had, you know, the best childhood uh, growing up because and for me, it was, it's, it's a family thing. So I'm one of, of eight uh second oldest too so i have bb teams <laughs> bb teams yeah so i'm lebanese so whatever <laughs> um but yeah i'm one of eight and uh my mom is is one of eight my dad comes from a big family uh so we have a big family uh and so most of my you know childhood growing up was just surrounded by family constantly and and like i said in the beginning like my dad was an entrepreneur my grandpa uh my uncle my aunt they're all entrepreneurs really successful so it was like cool to grow up in that environment where I could just learn uh, like people grow up and their parents expect them to go to college and get a job. Like it's almost like my parents wanted me to go and pursue entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. which was cool. And like, I appreciate that so much. Wh cause what did your dad do? My dad does uh, real estate. Um, so my dad uh, moved here from Lebanon because of the war when he was like 13 uh, and got into like the restaurant business, uh, opened a restaurant here and then and got into real estate, uh, which is pretty cool. And that's what he's been doing his whole life. Um, and, and I've always looked up to that. Uh, he's like the hardest worker I know. Um, but at the same time, he has the most freedom out of any of my other friends, dads that I grew up with. Right. Like one day he told me, like, I asked him like, cause this was when I was younger, like, what do you do for work? Cause I just didn't really understand it. And he just made a joke. He goes, I only work one day, of the, one day of the month. And I'm like, okay, to do what? He said to go collect checks. <laughs> I'm like, go to collect rent. And I'll, that always stuck with me. I thought that was like really cool and badass. Um, but I also saw him show up every day and, and go and work. That's uh, one of the, you know, like Nick and I have talked on the pod a lot about like the way the world is and where it's going. And, uh, you know, I think that emphasis on, you know, family and building within the family is, is such a dope thing and super happy that you got to have that experience. Yeah. Cause I think like, no, that's what, I mean, Nick and I both came from I'm, I'm super fam oriented that way. Great well, families, with, with but business. it's uh, just dope to like bring yep. in that like entrepreneurship piece and just like want to build that, that sort of culture, I guess, within yeah. our families long term and, and build that stuff out. One question that I want to kind of segue and ask you too, cause a lot of people probably, think of maybe you or at least that's like the thing that comes to mind is you know building a successful agency or lead gen or cold email or marketing really but when i think of you i think of like the operator right because that's like kind of just from what i've heard and seen and talking with you guys i want to talk a little bit about that because that is uh the it's not sexy right it's, yeah. it's not sexy at all it's you know everybody loves the flair and the marketing and this and that whatever but that's really like, and you clearly enjoy it. That's that's Dude, what I gets shits. You can't build a business without a really good operator. And so I would love to hear your thoughts on like that and how that developed. And yeah, I don't know, bro. It sounds it'll sound stupid, cause, and I've said this enough times to know it still sounds stupid. But like growing up, I used to love like building Legos and shit like that, right? And, and Talk that, about this last episode. Miles was a Lego fiend since he was twelve. I used yeah. to love Legos too, bro. And, and think about like a when you build a Lego, right? What is the manual? It's, a, it's an SOP. 
right? It's, a, it's an SOP. Um, and so like that stuck with me. And, and I kind of think of business the same way as that. Uh, it was like you're building a, a, a manual on how this shit is supposed to run mm -hmm. so that anyone, any consumer that steps in or, or employee uh, or partner or client, they know exactly what's going to happen page by page with visualization. Um, I would love to ask you like, so what does that look like day to day being kind of the lead operator of a, you know, multi six figure a month, a seven figure business yeah. annually? <laughs> yeah. Like, what does that look? What is your day to day as, you know, a really like great operator? What does that look like? It's so like, cause I think it's a reality check that a lot of, you know, we probably have a relatively younger, a lot of entrepreneurially minded. Everyone thinks it's all fun and games. Yeah. It's it's yeah. not all it's not all club nights and cigars. No, a lot of, a lot of Google Sheets and Google Docs. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to hear your day to day yeah. like as as a really strong operator. Yeah, so like everyone always notices this uh, when they hang out with like our full group, like Daniel and Dan and Christian. Like I'm more of the one to like kind of lay back and sit back, and you I I see that with you as well. Like we're not always uh, trying to go out and and uh, we have a good time. We we, we yeah, have our sure. fun, um, sure. but I'm. You know, I'm always focused. I always have like that that light switched on and like there's always a thought. But yeah, as an operator, um, there's not a there's not a lot of people out there that that talk about this or do this, but it's like solving a puzzle. Like building a business is if you want to build a business that gives you like that freedom lifestyle, you have to build it as a machine or as a system that can work without you being there. And that's like the number one mountain that people have to get over especially in our space they're all glorified freelancers like you've heard that term before right and it's because they don't understand what a business really is the definition of a business is just a set of processes that work and, and a lot of people are in unscalable models too i'll say that unscalable before. models and and so uh, being an operator to be honest it's it's being really structured and disciplined i think those are like the two most important things uh, or quality traits that i have that allow me to, to operate effectively um but it's also a lot of trial and error right like you have to test things uh and see how they play out and then learn from those and make adjust adjustments and and the other thing too is it's never ending um like you know i was talking to scott the other day uh, and he's bringing on a hire for his business and like they're you're making sops and so many of you have gone through this like oh i'm i'm trying to hire someone i got to make an sop like how many people have made an sop that like the next week it changes mm -hmm. right the process changes oh my god it's so I, <laughs> I had a tweet about this like maybe two nights ago i said every task you complete spawns 10 more bro and it's yes it's crazy true crazy so you true. have to keep up with that and and if if your process doesn't change often enough that's a red flag that's actually something you should look at because you should always be evolving. Like a business constantly needs to be changing and innovating. That's how you survive, especially in a competitive marketplace. Uh, so that's like the my role, like that's how I see my role as an operator is, is to continue to look at processes and find ways to do them differently or to innovate upon them. Um, and the other thing that I'm getting into more now than before uh, is finding people to play the different roles. Mm -hmm. I used to be like, I'm going to build a machine. I'm going to use Zapier. I'm going to use automations and it's, I could do this all myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but now it's gotten to the point where like you're saying like six, seven figures and it requires more people. Mm -hmm. Uh, so finding the right kind of people to fit into the different roles is, is what I'm into now. Yeah. That's I've, uh, cause I'm like, you know, I would, you're probably, I think you and Daniel probably operate very similar to similarly to how, Nick and I kind of yeah. operate like, yeah. you know, Daniel and I kind of just roll into the high tilt weapon, <laughs> weaponized autism and just like, <laughs> just like ideas flying, you know? Um, and, and you and Nick are like very similar in the sense that you're super, uh, just like on top of things like discipline, organization, all that kind of stuff. And it's been the biggest thing that I've probably learned this year is realizing like, holy shit, like I can't do it all myself. Or I'm going to fucking go insane and finding those people and like figuring out, Oh wow. Like if I can just empower 10 people to make a shit ton of money within my company, like I'm going to do so much better. And it's, did you really like, for me, it was kind of an ego thing too. Like I had to realize like, damn, like I'm really not that good and other people can do this just as well as I can. It's been yeah, easily the biggest lesson I've learned this year, probably. Yeah, uh, it's so huge. Like it's, it's really like an ego thing, right? You come to the realization that not only 
I can't do all of this on my own, but also like I don't need to. And I feel like that's like a really liberating realization. Well, one of the things on that note, and I jumped in, so maybe maybe I'm covering a point oh, you're, again. Yeah, right? You're good. But there's there's something very interesting in, in regards to like I always wanted to do everything myself. And that was a problem with our last business because my business partner, very skilled, but he wanted to, he really liked to have the control of the operations, right? And we weren't yeah. able to scale. And it was that realization of, I can do everything like really, really, really good. Probably like, cause I've done it for so long, mm -hmm. almost like world-class, right? Yeah. I can't do them all at the same time world-class. Yeah. Cause if I try to do them all at the same time world-class, the they, they're all mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to focus on my one thing. That's something I've been thinking about a lot. Bro. It's like, I had an epiphany last week. <laughs> like, I was just like, dude, all I need to be doing is getting on, getting on calls and building out that call structure in a leveraged way. And I need to be writing and recording videos. And that's it. That's all that I need to be doing within my, the couple of businesses that I own. Like, that's what I need to be doing. It's just that. Like quite literally just that and there's always bullshit that pops up and you need to address it but like if i do build it out the right way that's the leverage you know yeah dude it's it's so it's so important like this conversation right here is is huge because so many people feel like they need to be doing everything and also one thing that doesn't get talked about enough that i love that you said like you're world class at whatever task if that i happens. could just send cold emails dude i don't whatever <laughs> like i've sent cold emails before yeah like i know how to do it if that was my sole task, I'd be world class at it. Yeah. But sending cold emails and writing Twitter threads and recording video and making sure <laughs> Zapier automations are set up and, and all this other stuff that needs to be balanced, I can't. I can't do them all to the highest degree. No, no shit. Like nobody can and you shouldn't be expected to. But what's really important about what you're saying that I, I really want people to understand is like because you have that ability and that innate knowledge of how each part of your business works you can go and find someone to step in and do it mm -hmm. at a high level because you actually know what high level is. Yes. And and so what the biggest mistake I see people uh, do coming into the space is like, I want to start an agency and I want to outsource everything. Like I don't like, want to have to right do off any the bat, of it. Right without away. learning, without learning. And yeah, they don't even know what it is they're hiring for. So how can you measure if somebody's doing a good job or even getting the job done if you don't know what the job is? in itself yeah and so i always push like what i tell my students in, in client ascension because i do like the operations coaching and they're like oh when should i hire how do i hire i say you need to do this process yourself mm -hmm. learn it like stay disciplined and it's it's the hustle culture right like hustle on this in the beginning so that you can make a good hire um and and what i always say is do it until it breaks or do it until you see the quality really drop when mm -hmm. things start to become and then you hire over, you don't have your trigger yeah. That's your trigger, which I, to be honest, like I hate the, the hustle culture a lot. And it's something like I had, a, I have young guys that'll reach out and they'll be like, Hey man, I'm in school. Like, what do you think? And I'm like, dude, you should try to get like, I'm going to college. I'm doing this for this reason. So I know I want to go, but like, I also don't really care. Like, what should I do? I'm like, dude, you should try to get the best grades you can for the lowest hours work. Fact. Like that's your, and that's how I think about my life like i don't want to work the most that sounds awful i want to flaneur and ride my bike <laughs> it's, you want it's like the 80 20 right you want to get like train and 80 90 percent of the way there while doing that 10 to 20 yeah. percent of the work that's needed you don't need the extra 10 5 to 10 percent i even there. like i like the 80 20 of the 80 20 there you go four percent <laughs> of the work that gets 96 percent of the results <laughs> leverage they won't teach you that in warden sorry they won't but yeah, guys, like this is a really cool <laughs> they conversation. Teach you, in Warren, they teach you to be a, uh, a good worker. A good worker that can work in at finances, a company like whatever. what you're building, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's it's really cool because not an, enough people. So as an operator, right, there's not a lot of operators in the space. It's, it's mm -hmm. a lot of marketers and visionaries. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like the way I see it from my perspective is not enough people have this conversation of like, one, you don't need to do everything. And, and two, you shouldn't. And to, to make effective hires and to effectively scale a business, you should at least go in. You gotta do the boring stuff. You gotta do the boring work. So do you do any marketing? So yeah, I, I love marketing, dude. It's like a video game to me, right? <laughs> like it's sort of straight up a video game. Like mm -hmm. cold email is a video game. Like 
It is like that's my version of a video game. So I do uh, marketing, right? You see me on Twitter. I, yep. I'm growing my Twitter. Just brand. bring the mic up a little bit so we get the audio. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm growing my brand on Twitter. Um, I'm making content. I'm uh, working a lot. With, I mean, Christian really is, is the uh, machine behind all of that. Christian's our creative director, uh, and he does all of the copywriting. Such um, a good girl. <laughs> such a good girl. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> such a good girl. But yeah, like I, I still love marketing because because that's how I got my start, and I still can turn that switch in my brain and think you know like marketing. I, I think I like you said you're really good at cold email. You just don't want to do that or you don't have the time to do it that's the way i think about marketing and that's why yep. i partner with daniel like daniel is is the marketing guy yeah so i don't have to be and he's way better at that than i am and he has all the time to do that so it's, i have all the time to it's do interesting because we do the operations and stuff a little bit different <clears throat> and the way we had it set up was like i'm doing core operations and logan is doing more like a the the creative stuff and we're kind of as things progress with launch socials and our coaching business, our consulting, we're kind of changing it towards, I, I'm i very strong on the quantitative side. So the quantitative side of the marketing, as well as the quantitative side of the operations. And Logan's really good at the qualitative side of the operations and the qualitative side of the marketing, the more creative side of, of each of those. I, I think that yeah, balance, that. Uh, you know, everyone's business kind of works out a little bit differently. Maybe you're more operations than marketing. Um, I love marketing. I think marketing is yeah. great. Like I love looking yeah. at the numbers behind marketing, but the the qualitative side of it, like sometimes I could I could care less. Like let me just give me the result, dude. Like that, that's <laughs> yeah. how I think sometimes. See, that's and I I like I I like making art, and then it, and it balances we, we really good. About that with Jordan, it's like yeah, I just want to do like create things all like day. Numbers long. don't excite like, you. Like if it was just Logan, Logan would just post a thread, and we wouldn't track <clears throat> anything. Or we would just post a thing and no emails would be collected or whatever. And if it was just me, I'm just posting it to get the sale. And the balance works out really, really yeah, good. It's a yeah. super interesting dynamic. And I think that's why it works, right? Like the, re the reason it works for me is because of the team I've built uh, or I've you know entitled myself to essentially. Like I'm the operations guy. Mm -hmm. Christian is the creative and the marketing guy. Dan is the sales guy. And like any business needs those three things that you need mm -hmm. a guy for those three things, right? You guys mm -hmm. rolled up here today with, with your sales guy and your video guy and your content guy. Like you have that. And I think that's why you are having success. Um, and you're not trying to own all of those business, all those parts of the business. Yeah, there's no own. way. There's no way I'm setting up a camera for this. Like, Dude, like, <laughs> like I know how to set up the camera. It's just like it's just a whole another headache and extra. It's thing. like, and I can't set teeth. it up. I can't set it up great. Like I set it up baseline, like good, and, and that's about it. <laughs> and that's what you want in business. You want people to come in and you want them to own that part of the business and be great at it instead of you just doing it because you know how to do it and can get the job done. Like you want people to excel at each little aspect of the business that you're working on. And I think that's what takes you from six or seven figures to eight figures right and it's not the the just getting it done one thing i really love about you too is like you know the like there's not there's absolutely i mean like a coaching or consulting model is in my opinion the best model or very up there right just in terms of what, super scalable compared to an agency what you can do and just like you know software you gotta if you're gonna make software like you really have to write good code and most people don't it's just like a bunch of rehashed bullshit you know data collection kind of stuff um, and one thing I love about you is that you actually are doing this stuff like there's so many people though that get that want to get into that kind of stuff and they're not doing what what they like talk about like someone asked me yesterday I did a Q&A on Twitter and he's like what's the hardest part of running a coaching business and I'm like I mean, dude, like the hardest part is probably getting people to just use what you have in front of them. Yeah. But I was also like, the only way you can know if they're using what they have in front of them is if you're fucking doing it and you're yep. doing it like you, what, what's your guys, your agency is doing great, right? Like, yeah, still, you guys are still running it full tilt and growing it. Yeah. So our agency, we had our first six figure month, which was cool. That was, you nice. know, the goal for Congrats. us. Appreciate it. Um, and, and yeah, like that's, that's exactly why client ascension works. That's exactly why a coaching program works is because it's, we're actively doing it. Right. So for example, mm -hmm. I'm the operations coach at client ascension. All of these guys are building an agency. So am I, 
So when I show up to the call every week and I'm hearing from these guys the different things they're going through with their agency, I'm also going through those things. Yeah. And so I can speak to them. I'm mm -hmm. not just, you know, mindset, like, you know, yeah. things that don't really matter. It's it's in the trenches, right? I'm in the trenches. I see that so often. Like, <laughs> we'll have, like, competitors or whatever. Not that we really have competitors, but. Um, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I see come. people and they, they say, I want to do coaching for this certain thing i'm like okay like what's your experience with that oh like i've never really done it like did this or that but not this specifically i'm like dude like how do you know how to get these people results like how yeah. do you know it's gonna work like well i just you're just lying to your customers at that point i can't imagine because like i have my you know in terms of opportunities like if i was just weighing opportunities i would just go all in on launch socials i wouldn't do anything else but i have my fitness company still right and it's like so i get on with these people and i intimately understand every single piece of it because i'm doing it every day like yeah. i'm acquiring customers for my fitness yep. company i'm helping them get results i know how to structure things and it's just uh i don't think that's it's just like kind of swept under the rug it's not Nobody... talked about enough because everyone not everyone but a lot of people the guru types they sell people on certain models oh you're going to be a lead gen agency or oh you're going to be a coaching business this is the best business to get into people are like oh okay like I'll do that, but they don't have any skills first or interests or hobbies that they're, they know everything about. So I think the first thing is like, know everything about, and I made a whole YouTube video on this, know everything about one thing, identify what the problems are with that thing. And then pick one of the models that's like out there to solve that problem. So if agency is the best way to solve it, you start an agency. If coaching is the best way to solve that problem for that customer, you start a coaching business. If e-com selling an e-com product is the best way to solve that problem for your customer, you start an e-com business. So everyone's like, oh, I'm going to start an e-com business. Well, what, do you, what problem are you going to solve? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, it's like pick something first. Like know what you're talking about first. Yeah. It just and becomes easy. And the coaching... The coaching model is really interesting because if you look at really any successful coaching program and there are programs that will have success in the beginning and then you really start to see like this program isn't resulting in, in student success. But the ones that do stick around are, are guys like yourself, like Nick, right? Four years ago, we, we were we were on a podcast and he was running a drop shipping business and he was getting into growing Instagram pages. So he's qualified to now show people how to do that because he has the track record and not only that he's still you're still doing it right you're posting on youtube you're posting on twitter you're posting on instagram yep. and so you could actually speak to that effectively uh and and that's like the core thing with a coaching business like don't start a coaching business like start a business so that you can coach people on mm -hmm. that business model that yep. you're building yeah and it's it's uh it's really interesting too, because just like, you know, your story and our stories and really everybody we talk to, it's like you start with the, like people want to find the definitive answer that you're going to stick with. Like everybody wants to get to that place, yep. right? That wants to build a business. They want to have the thing that they can hang their hat on and, and enjoy building. And it's like, you know, they, you never see like the right path in the forest until you've kind of walked aimlessly for like about a mile. Mm -hmm. Like you don't see the clean fork in the road. Step yep. one. It's not like this little nature trail. Like you have to go and walk and fucking climb and, through and, thorns. And, and, and many times you'll, you'll pay, take one, take one path be successful, take another path, be successful. And yeah. then you see your big one. Yeah. Well, that's how it, it, it all accumulates and compounds. Like, when my, I, you know, dropped out and I've had my first Instagram fitness page and was selling programs there. And then I was, you know, doing in-personal training and running group classes at a gym for someone else. And then I was, I started selling some of my own marketing services done for you for other people. And then I left that and became COO of an agency and saw the whole like kind of back end. And then, you know, I leave that. And then now I start the info product because I've been in the fitness space actually training people for three years and been an athlete and mm -hmm. working out my whole life. And then, then you it go just, high ticket. And then, then I start selling for people uh, like as a service, basically, yep. and building that out. And then it's just like it, the nat there has to be that progression. I think the fitness one is a really good example because you had – you had the in-person stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going door to door, whatever, doing that. Yeah, and then after the, after the marketing stuff, right? You he, love the door to door stuff. It's you great. love talking about that. Yeah, yeah. I love it. But, but after the marketing stuff and working as a COO at that agency, you started your own fitness thing and you were doing online info products. And then it went high ticket. And then you and I talked. I'm like, dude, do group. It's more scalable. 
Then you do group and it just scales way higher. And you kind of kind of like found the model, but it took two years, three years, three years. to find that perfect model yeah. that actually scales. Yeah. Because you evolved. And I think people are so afraid to, to change what they're doing. Um, and what I'm hearing from Logan is, is along the way you picked up skills on, like you said, COO, you picked up operation skills, you did high ticket sales. So you picked up sales skills, you did mm-hmm. social media. So you know how to uh, do marketing. Right. And then mm-hmm. you're also building your brand around fitness. So like you have all these different skill sets and assets that you can now push into this one venture that brings them all together mm-hmm. and capitalizes on all that accumulated knowledge that you can't just acquire like after you know a short amount of time dude and i i feel like too in the entrepreneur space and the internet business like it's so heavily touted that you should have your own company and start your own company and i believe in that wholeheartedly i think no matter what you're doing you should chase equity you should always pursue equity no matter even if you're going to work a job for the rest of your life you should be working so you have equity from that company if you're going to work a job for the rest of your life right and that's there's nothing wrong with that pursuing corporate equity like dude you can make fucking bank you know a lot of those guys make way more money than the I think, entrepreneurs i think you also see. important is profit share too having some kind of share of the profits because you can but have equity swear, without that profit yeah that's fair i i kind of think of them as sure. the same yep. thing to a degree but yes absolutely but i think that it's uh it's not talked about enough that you know working for people if you want to be an entrepreneur dude i worked for two guys that I learned so fucking much from then they're both, you know, really, really successful entrepreneurs, multi seven figure guys. And like, I think you, you know, you don't, you don't get better. You almost see better and then acclimate That's to it, facts. you know? I like that. And I think that it's, uh, it's really under underrated too. Like if you want to go build a business, you should probably go work for someone that's building that business for six months. Cause now you can actually hang your hat on the fact that you can do it. And you saw someone do it. So I, like I, I saw a cool Gordon clip of him talking about his time with Taylor Welch. Yeah. He, he's like, he, someone asked him, how did you scale yeah. so fast? And why did everybody else not scale so fast? And he's like, dude, I saw us go from 300 K a month to 1.5 a month in a 12 month period. <laughs> like I was a part of yeah. it. I saw everything. You don't, you don't just start a traffic and funnels or a gym launch or a cardo and no. enterprise. You don't just start that. It, the knowledge has to accumulate over time. Yeah. So one, one story <laughs> I like to tell, cause again, like the, I go back to when I first got into entrepreneurship and one of the things that almost had me drop out of it was seeing other people succeed and, and, and asking myself like, why am I not there yet? Like, why am I not doing what they're doing? And I thought it was something wrong with me, um, but I just didn't see the full story. So yep. for me, the way I actually got started in the agency space going way back was when I first got to school, I went and worked for a, a local agency. Uh, funny enough, they did cold calling, right? It was like a cold calling agency. Mm-hmm. And so essentially it's a lead gen agency, right? Yep. At, at its core. Uh, and when I started, I was, I think employee number four or five. And when I left a year later, they were nearing a hundred employees. So that experience to watch a lead gen agency, even yep. though it was cold calling, no different than cold email or LinkedIn, I was able to watch every single day how they built this thing from scratch and i still recall experiences from that from from being at that agency even though it was only like 10 hours a week like just recently for our agency we uh we had to bring in an operations manager Mm -hmm. right and i remember when the agency i worked with brought in an operations manager and and i recalled on that experience which i think increase the the likelihood of success of me bringing in an operations manager and knowing how to handle that situation and, and that was by working for an agency for what and $10 I think an hour. Like that, that's where I like me with the agency experience and seeing inside so many people's businesses, just consulting sometimes consulting calls, just seeing what people were doing wrong. I'm like, dude, I've seen this before. Like fix this. And it's, it just gets fixed. Right. Or inside of anyone's business, that was coaching business, helping them with their personal brands and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I can take those experiences. Now I just know what works. And what doesn't work? Because I saw it too many times. Yeah, you just gotta you just gotta have the patience. So one of the other questions I always had uh, early on was like, I understand like you have to be patient, but like at the same time, it's almost like an excuse to be lazy, mm-hmm. right? And so what I've realized it's it's the the day to day consistency 
It's the duality. It's the duality, right? You have to be really urgent in the day to day, but you have to be really patient in the macro, right? Gary mm-hmm. V talks about this all the time. <laughs> this is Gary V's right? like Gary patience. V's <laughs> <laughs> and, and so Gary V talks about it. And he talks about it in an interesting way. But I found a quote uh, earlier this year that I now have on my wall above my desk that I, anytime I get the chance like this to, to share it, I do. And it's live in the day, measure by the decade. And really what they're saying there is, is live in the day to day and don't judge yourself for the outcomes on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're going to constantly be upset. Right. So the biggest thing that I would say to young entrepreneurs is detach emotion from outcomes and put that on the the inputs mm-hmm. instead. So if you show up every day and you make 10 cold calls, celebrate yourself for that. Not the fact that you book two demos or you close one sale as a result. 100%. And if you do that every single day, you'll look back and you'll be like, damn, like I'm now at six figures or now I'm partnered with this guy or now I have 10 employees. It just happens over time. Mm -hmm. Um, So obsess over the day to day and obsess over those inputs that other people have seen generate results. Yeah, I've talked about that. I mean, I hold like for such a firm believer in it. I had a, a thing that like I've said a lot of, especially in like my fitness company, it's like, what can you do every day for forever? Because if you can do that, like you're just, you're going to win, period. I think you have to enjoy it. Or you have to, it shouldn't be hard to wake up and do. Like you shouldn't have to like motivate yourself to get up and do that specific task. You have to be just a little bit excited about it to a degree. You don't have to be passionate about it. I think you have to be like some kind of, you have to have some excitement there and be like, this is going to get me what I want. And you, I feel like you have to make it a game in some way, right? And at, at least for me, that's what works for me. If you can make it a game in, in like, I don't know, like guys, like the male personality is all about like chasing goals, right? And like that, that dopamine of, of checking something off your, your to-do list, that's how I treat it. Like I wake up and I, I tell myself, I want to write a thread today, or I want to send 10 cold emails or make 10 cold calls. And, and you get, you get like the excitement and the adrenaline off of, doing those yeah. things it's really like you have to reprogram your mind i think you really do to to celebrate and get excited over the inputs and it's like with fitness you show up to the gym you're not going to see the results right away but if you do it long enough consistently mm-hmm. you're how, how do you see- balance this obsession with like your personal life dude i don't think i do a good job with that i don't i think that's okay yeah i you think i have the to. self you don't need to yep. <laughs> like I, I that's something that i definitely want to work on and I've, i tell people this because how like how how have I had business success, right? It's not all coming from me. It's coming from other people. You have to like seek other, like how do you have success in fitness? You go to someone that's had success in fitness, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing now in my personal life is how do you find that balance? I need to find people that have found that balance and and learn from them. And that's kind of like my next thing. Interesting. So what does that look like? Like what areas do you think you need more balance in? I think, I mean, for me, like moving to Tampa was big. Uh, cause I, like I told you guys, I grew up in a small town in New York, uh, constantly same, same bro. Moving to Miami was big. My boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember, dude. I remember. Uh, and we talked about it. It's it just a big change. It's like big change. Upstate New York to Miami or Tampa is huge, huge, huge difference. No, and, there's anyway, I'll, I'll let you finish. <laughs> I, it, I can talk. I can read Yeah. I want to hear from Nick too. Cause this is important, but it's not just the, like the location is one thing, right? Like mm-hmm. that's cool. Um, but for me personally, like I was constantly surrounded by friends and family that I grew up with, right? And so like I could, it almost was, you know how they say like you, you move out of your hometown is like the best thing you can do for personal development. I never understood why. I'm like, change the location, like cool. Like I don't really understand it until you're there, right? So every week in, in New York, there's always something going on with family. And if I don't have something going on in my own personal life that I orchestrated, I could just default to hanging out with family. And I did that every single weekend here. I don't have that. Mm -hmm. So I'd find myself, I'm done with work for the day. It's five o'clock and I don't really have plans. Mm -hmm. And I don't really, not, not to say I don't have friends and I don't have plans and I'll do some of this stuff, but there are days where I'll, I'll finish work and I'll think like, there's nothing else I can be doing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go back to work where really I should just go and and fuck off and like have fun and and meet new people. Mm -hmm. And so that's not necessarily been a challenge, but it's just something that it's a change that I've adjusted to Maybe yep. you can speak to that. Well, too. I think, I think there's a, there's a couple things. Um, one, when you're, you're kind of in that same group, you default to the same mindset and activities that the group has. Right. So if you, 
place yourself in a group. I mean, the the five friends thing, you surround yourself with five people, super cliche, Mm -hmm. but it's super true. Like if you're surrounded by five people that are working hard all day and then they go have fun at night or do whatever, come here and smoke some cigars and instead of go and play video games or or just go and, you know, I don't know, do whatever, right? Just just some low IQ activity or whatever. (laughs) It's better, you know, you you default to that, right? And you're like, you kind of get this mindset of, ah, it's okay. It's okay. I'm doing this. That's all right. I oh. I did enough. I'm I'm making more than them in my business. So I, can I wouldn't chill. say low IQ. I would say low ambition. Low, low ambition. I think it's a, a better one, right? Well said. Um, and then there's, cause cause I feel like, and this is not to talk down on my friends. And stuff, I I have great friends back home, right? But a lot of people are happy with just the normal. I'm gonna get a good job and I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna go to the bars every single night, and that's gonna be my thing. I don't really want to do that. Um, I just I feel like the ambitions that I have are much bigger and what we're building is is much bigger than that. And I also think it's important the activities that you do and the things that you do after you you do work. Right. Because, you know, if if you after you do work and you're like, okay, well, what can actually benefit my life? Probably coming to the cigar lounge and the private members group, whatever. And there's probably some rich people here that I could talk to and just have a good time with finding those things that are actually like beneficial and like wholesome and like healthy activities for you i think that's super important rather than doing something that doesn't really benefit you long term that's i mean because you can you can go and have fun and dick off and do whatever but does it really benefit you long term is always like a question that i ask I th- myself i think too i have a couple of things i want to say on that uh firstly like with the the hometown stuff i'm from a like a hundred thousand person city in Ohio, right? So same. And I actually of, love my hometown. Like, me, yeah, me it's too, great. Bro, I love it's a great place back. to grow up. Great place to grow up. But I think about moving from there and coming to Florida and now especially Miami. The two big things for me are like well, number one, when you leave those people, like the people around you that have known you your whole life, are always going to perceive you as the person that they've always known. And when you start to do more and change. Now it's going to be like they're still going to perceive you as the same person because they've seen you being an idiot and as a eighth (laughs) grader, you know, and like they are always going to perceive you that way. And when you start to change, you reform your identity. And it's just like kind of hard to be around it because it's like a shell shock to people around you. And to some extent that you don't want to do the things that maybe you used to and you're changing. And it's just like uh, there's friction there. Right. Not even necessarily in like anyone like I'm still friends with all my friends that I've had my whole life. Like I'm still tight with those guys. Um, And but it's just like it's just a different identity and you don't share the same interests anymore and you just kind of outgrow it. And then for me, the other thing is like the the perception of time, like when you when I came here and especially in Miami, it feels like time just like exists on a whole different continuum. Three days at home now feels like a month like I get itchy you know and i just feel like there's everything like you start when you get outside of that that bubble you start perceiving time a little bit differently to where it kind of warps and then moving into like the life balance like i don't think you need balance i think you need self-awareness and just realizing like if what you want to do is build a big business you should do it but for me i mean to me i look at like things like spending time outside i think you have to do it in a way that doesn't kill you a hundred percent. But like, I look, I look at things like, you know, working out or going outside and just like detoxing from absolutely injecting blue light. And, (laughs) and like, I look at that stuff as almost mandatory, but the way I've kind of come to find the balance is just to set aside. Cause when I first started doing this stuff, I didn't have it. And I would, and I would beat myself up about it. I'd be guilty. I was like, Oh, I need to be doing more. I need to be doing more. And it's just like, I've set it up now to where I will, you know, if I get my four to six good hours in, like that's the day and I'm going to go enjoy, enjoy life, you know? Cause that's what ultimately I think partially what we work for as well. Yeah. I mean, and I felt just, it yesterday a little bit cause I didn't do that much, but closed pretty much closed the deal. Um, did a couple other like admin tasks that need to be done, some ops tasks, whatever pack for the trip. And then no and I, you know, went shopping, got some food whatever just doing our thing just having fun um bantering with you know the waitresses and stuff <laughs> <laughs> and you know that that was like I, I felt maybe a little bit guilty 
because I, I wasn't I wasn't working and there's so much opportunity I could be working but I got done what needed to get done and I had a good day I, this is fun you know well it goes back to like the the micro consistency right like because if you try to do all day like the work just the quality of the work just gets it, lower it, number one, way yeah, too much it definitely drops but also too then you're gonna have a zero day at some point you're gonna burn out and be like fuck i can't do any of this i just need to get away from it right for a day or two days or three days and that's what kills you and if but if you just get three things done every day and then go you know have some fun hang out it's like you can do you can yeah. again do that forever bro and like what needs to be said after all of that is is that's okay yeah. right like there's like this i feel like there's this almost like a standard on money twitter where like it's in just an entrepreneurship in general where mm -hmm. it's a grind like it's, a, it's the hustle culture right and i feel like we have to almost be easier on ourselves and it's hard because we have such high ambitions and, and our goals are, are massive and mm -hmm. you know we're so far away from them probably right you have big goals that we're still uh, yeah. chasing after but like one thing that that i try to do a lot is just kind of like like look back on like remember where we were four years ago sitting mm -hmm. doing a podcast we had no idea it's again the duality here. thing of remember yeah. oh yeah we were there and now we've gotten here and then it's like oh wait but i can get there y yeah and it's, it's kind of having <laughs> there's two opposing views of i need to work yeah. super super hard but also all right chill a sec like yeah, i did dude. this i yeah i think you just have to be like i think the cool thing with this event too uh that we're doing in in tampa is like it's it's in real life again that i think that's the big the biggest differentiator is the fact that it's in real life and i think having these in for you guys too with the podcast like having in-person conversations and kind of reflecting on these your filmed story, conversations because we would have these conversations, conversations without anyways, anything, anything yeah yeah that's huge because that i think is the best way to kind of look back and reflect on how you've changed right like look what logan was talking about like you change from from when you were uh, growing up with your high school friends um and, and i think it's important to like reflect and almost like give yourself a pat on the back uh because we've come a long way and i don't think people like say that enough uh and and of course like there's still a long road to go but i don't know if it's sustainable and i don't know if it's reachable if you don't take a second to yep. look back and, and appreciate yourself for how far you've come million there, percent there's, there's something interesting about clarity in, in that and and knowing your situation while also not knowing your situation so like with the podcast for example we, we mentioned this a lot but it ties into this we just we're just like yo we're gonna film this and get some clips right and it's turned into like we got a lot of view we have like probably 10 million views on all the clips combined so far in the last like three months we really started posting short form like two -ish. way more than that it's about 10 it's about 10, maybe close to 15 now. I haven't checked the numbers in a couple of days, but it's been going up. We've been getting like 300K views every 48 hours on YouTube right now, just from shorts. TikTok went crazy. We got a huge clip on, you know, Instagram that went crazy, a couple mil. And to us, we were just having fun doing it. And we didn't really understand the gravity of the situation. But now we're kind of understanding it. And it's almost like the things that do the best are the things you just do because it's fun to do and it just kind of happens, you know? And yeah. and for us, this is this is this isn't hard to do. It's it's balanced, right? Mm -hmm. This we balance this with work. This is kind of play to a degree. Sure it's work, but it's, it's we're just having work. we're just having conversations yeah. with our friends. And we're not even trying to grow the podcast per se. We're just trying to have fun with it. And it just blossomed into this thing. And I think the same thing goes for business in general, or really anything you do. Like Legos, right? When you're growing up, why <laughs> did you like playing with Legos? You just enjoyed it, yeah. Right? Or why do you like doing the operations? You just enjoy it. Yeah. It just happens. And I think finding that thing where you just enjoy it, it will do really good because you just want to do more of it, and you'll put all your effort into looking at the numbers or looking at the qualitative side, of the creative side. Of How can I make this so much better? And and that's really it. It's just the things that happen effortlessly <clears throat> happen really really well, and they they turn into something beautiful. It's an I think it's an energy thing, like people like ultimately everything you're ever going to get in this world is going to be on the other side of other people right that's just the nature of reality and i think that people there's a there's a certain kind of resident energy or resonant energy when you're just doing it for the sake of the craft or the thing itself and people feel that and resonate with it more because they, people just are you know they enjoy genuine things one one question i want to ask you Andre, as we're, you know, we're talking, we've went pretty heavy in biz, 
you know, we're talking about lifestyle and mindset stuff, and mindset, whatever. whatever. Um, I want to know like what outside of, you know, becoming the, the dawn of Gmail, <laughs> like what, it, what else excites you? Like just in life? Yeah. Great question. And remind me if I forget it, but I want to speak real quick on what you guys were saying. And mm-hmm. I think the reason why this podcast is blowing up so quickly and why we'll continue to is because of what Nick says, you show up here and you're not really, you're not trying necessarily right like you're not sitting here like all nervous like oh i gotta be prepared and oh i gotta you know be on my best act like right? this is super casual that makes me think of the, so the podcast really started like once nick and i got the miami club circuit out of our veins <laughs> kind of it's still yeah, kind of there it's but always like, gonna be there not like when we when we first all moved there it was ridiculous like monday nights tuesday nights thursday friday saturday night it was just ridiculous and uh but the really this started because we would you know once we got over that we weren't even partners then. We were just homies and would we'd go set up shop at on Nick's balcony, like smoke a spliff and just talk about business or any of these things, like really just life. A lot of it gears into business because um, we just enjoy it. And we would like smoke and like, it'd be like 9 p.m. on quasi-spiritual a- Quasi-spiritual conversations just randomly. Yeah, it'd be like 9 p.m. We'd smoke a spliff and we'd set up at the two desks in his apartment and bump no effort by T Grizzly and just work <laughs> and, and just like work and whiteboard from like nine to one a.m. Yeah. or two a.m. or whatever it was. And I just you said no effort. And I thought of, I thought of my boy T Grizzly. I love some Detroit bounce on some eight oh eights. I love it. Like it's a really great sound. But yeah, that's why that's why I think it works, guys, because it's not it's effortless, right? Like you just show up. And we here, could do this forever. And you could do this forever. Most people don't get past it. And you enjoy a couple it. episodes. Yeah, I think we're like I don't see us stopping right now no reason to yeah no reason to uh and and i'm super inspired by that because that that's kind of what christian and i were after when we first started our podcast it like wasn't a task it wasn't like a to a to-do list action item right it was just something we showed up and just did creating we wanted to yeah and and like you said like you'd be having these conversations anyways now the cameras are on that's the only difference yeah. right and, and and other people are seeing into this world um but to go back to your question you're asking um, yeah, outside of business, what else uh, am I passionate about? Motivated. What, what motivated? What excites? You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What excites me? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think like always at my core is gonna be family. Like I, I, I'm excited by like the opportunity and and like I've had a lot of success in business and all of my time is spent in business. I look forward to the day where I could put a lot of time into not building a business but building a family. Right. I'm right there with you. Yeah. And and like that's something that I haven't tapped into at all yet. And and that's just like I'm I have like goosebumps when I was talking about it. Like I'm excited by that. Yeah. Uh and and so that's something. Um and and yeah, man, I just like to honestly like it it does have to do with business, uh what I'm about to say, but like meeting people in real life is I'm so passionate about that. Uh, and that's why I'm so like excited for this event. Cause even last night, like we had a couple of guys here that we met for the first time and just being able to shake their hand and, and hear about, you know, how we, you oh, know, I know you from and, Twitter or whatever. Yeah, I know you from Twitter or dude, like this advice you gave me changed my life or, or you helped me to do this. Like the impact that you have on people is, is monumental. And when you're in this Twitter sphere, you don't really feel it. Like you might get comments on your post saying, yo, yeah. like this is sick. Like, thanks for sharing. And it's just, you know, it's just another thing and you scroll past it. But when you're there, like face to face, you're shaking someone's hand and, and you could just see like, really, like you changed their trajectory. Like that's sick. And even if you didn't have an impact on their lives, just hearing from other people that are, are doing cool mm-hmm. things in our space, uh, that's something I, I want to do more of. On the family um, thing, that's that always is super interesting to me to talk about that because for me, I look at it like my dad had a landscaping business, right? But he never had the access to the internet. So imagine that he had what we have right now on the internet Mm -hmm. in his, in the nineties in the eighties and nineties, when he was like doing his thing locally, imagine he started a coaching business that just blew up. Right. And then it's like, okay, well I have this opportunity in front of me. My dad was doing similar things, right? He just didn't have the, like the vehicle fully to reach all these people. I should take advantage of this for my family and like future generations and stuff. Or like my grandma just, just passed away and, my grandpa passed away a couple of years ago, so their house is, is now, no one's living in it. And it's like, I want to, there's a first house built on the block. And to me, there's some sentimental value there. I want to 
be able to buy that, keep it in the family forever because it's just like that piece of family history. Yeah. And it's also these major families that are out there never sell anything. They no. just accumulate assets and keep them. I want to be able to have the means to do that long term and pass that down. So my, my dad passed down his knowledge to me, probably the work ethic he had, all that. He didn't have the right vehicle right with the Internet. Now that I have it, I better take advantage of it while it's here and just build for the next generation, my kids, etc. Yeah, it's just super interesting because I have a very similar experience with my dad too. Like, I feel like we're we're like actually scary like twins. <laughs> yeah. it's just kind of it's, it's super true. Like, it's super, we're the same person, kinda. And uh, I just like he's done you know pretty well. And I just think like if he was your he, dad, your dad is your twin, or I am. Like in terms of how we grew up. Well, that too, but oh, okay. my dad and I, yeah, we have a v eerily, like eerie similar story uh, and just like upbringing, whatever. But no, my dad and I are very similar. And like he, I remember he even told me like after, I mean, he was supportive of me leaving school after I explained to him what I wanted to do and like what my vision was and things like that. Very supportive, really like probably the only one that was like truly all in and from my family, like, yo, do this. Right. And, uh, and he, he, I remember him telling me after I got some things going, you know, I'd start making three grand a month. And he's like, dude, I wish I would have had this kind of, like, we didn't have that. You know, he, they didn't have those opportunities to go and, you know, learn endless things online and leverage infinitely on the internet. And uh, it's also really interesting, too, to hear, like, like entrepreneurship, I think, is the best self-development tool. And it's really interesting to hear how all of these guys, everyone we talk to that are doing this kind of stuff and doing it well, they all are like f super fit. Like they all want to build a big family, which is crazy. And it just it's, it's a very a big contrast to what you see in and the we world talk about today. It all the time. You got motherfuckers willing to give up their bloodline so they can, you know, save the climate and shit like <laughs> One question I have for you guys, just staying on this topic, you talked about your dad, you talked about your dad. Uh, and, and one thing I'm super excited for, for this weekend is, is my dad's going to be here uh, at my event. Right? So great, bro. bro. And, and so cool. Yeah. Like, I'm really excited about that. Like, I've, there's a lot of cool people here that I want to meet, but like, that's the thing that keeps coming back to me. Um, and it, it, I'm just excited for him to see this because it, it, it's hard to explain until you're here. Mm -hmm. right and, and you're like feeling the energy that's in the room and, and just seeing the conversations that are happening so one thing i was thinking of that i just have a question for you guys like i i think i want to partner up with my dad on something at some point like that'd be really cool like have well, you guys ever so, so i already kind of have that okay. to a degree and uh, basically created a family company my dad and i both have ownership in that's our holding company and we take whatever distributions just to, to live whatever but all the money stays in there and my dad just manages the investment. So on the marketing side, on the business side, whatever, all the whole the holding company owns all those, <clears throat> and then all the cash flow from those goes into the holding co company. And my dad just manages the investments. And That's I'm like, hey dad, sick. hey dad, check this out. Like, look at this stock. And he's like, all right, got it. And then he'll go research or whatever. He's like, I think this is good. And he'll he'll drop money in it and he'll, he'll buy it or or crypto, whatever. Dad, check this out for me. And it kind of takes that burden of the investing and the growth of the wealth off my shoulder so we're already kind of partnered to a degree and when is the right time we're going to go buy real estate together probably bring my uncle in too which is super cool because mm -hmm. he's about to retire from his job and he's he's worked in you know big government contracts overseas and stuff you know in hong kong and, and dubai and stuff at airports so he kind of has that deal making side of things and it's really turned into like a family company my sister works for me and manages the, the IG page network. She's about to do stuff for, you know, launch socials, just basic stuff. But it's really turned into like this family run type of thing. And that's super cool for me where you're, you're sharing that, the money, the wealth, yeah. et cetera, with your family. Dude, yeah. I love that for you, dude. That, that inspires me. It's super me. exciting. It's, it's, it's super it's, great. It's super inspired me to see that. Um, and like I was talking with my dad about, he's talking about, you know, maybe like something in Florida, Airbnb. I was like, dude, I like I want to be able to throw down on that with him and just like it's just super cool um and especially you know you always get that perspective now like i think like when i first started i had a huge chip on my shoulder and like i wanted to build a business or do something to make money so that i could you know 
gain status or you know have time freedom and it was just like this big selfish pursuit and now every every time i go home it's just like and it's it's it sounds cheesy because a lot of people like put it out there and it's like a marketing thing and like but like being able to act, provide for your family is so true like the 100%. best, the best and, feeling and, in the world and you know my mom she she's a therapist social worker at one of the the hospitals back home and you know they they're trying to make her get the 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 jab the jib jab whatever you want to call it <laughs> on here so youtube doesn't censor us and she just refused right and i'm like mom honestly if you want to leave the job like leave the job like i'll help you figure it out we can take care of it because I kind of have that family orientation of things. And mm -hmm. it's like, we're building the family business. So we have that freedom as like a, a bloodline, as a unit to, to go and just, we don't have to sacrifice our time or freedom or whatever for some corporate job or whatever. And sure we're building a corporate business, but kind of right. We, we have like corporate, you have to, to a degree like operations and stuff, but I'll always keep that stuff in mind for the employees that I have is like, freedom is the number one thing and never want the employees that i have to feel like they're stuck or anything like that I want them to grow etc and really it puts it into perspective every time you go back home or there'd be conversations like there's a conversation between my mom and my grandma when we're back home they're talking about their friend or whatever and they had to purchase a flight and it was like 700 dollars or whatever and i'm like mom if you need to purchase a flight to 700 dollars and you don't want to spend the money i'll take care of it like we're good like the family business will pay for it. And that's just my mindset of we're building these things to take care of who took care of us originally. Dude. And, and that's so motivating. Like you, you, you talked earlier about like, you got to do things that where you wake up, you want to do them. Like, even if it's a day where you don't want to get something like that done, like think about that. And like, there's no way that's not going to get you right yeah, out of bed. You, you can't like when you, when your perspective changes from that to now, it's like, cause I remember when I was, when it was just kind of like me, you know, and I'd finally not, I wasn't working for anyone else anymore. I was just like, I had my, you know, a couple offers, whatever I was doing on the internet. And it was like me and maybe like one or two guys, you know, Noah was kind of involved back then a little bit, it, but it was just like, there would be times when it would just like, I would get in these funks and it was just like, nothing would really happen. And now like take That's one huge thing that's taking, I mean, taking ownership of your life and like kind of viewing everything as like, it's my fault is great. But like really taking on more responsibility is what everyone needs. Everyone needs. If you took like the more responsibility you amass, the better a person you become. Mm -hmm. And the I think, blank. I think for a lot of people that happens when they, they become a dad and they don't really have to, have that responsibility until that comes because it's mm -hmm. just them and we're experiencing it way sooner we grow up way faster because of it because the life experience like you got employees and you're responsible for those Bro, employees and making sure say. that they're paid every every single month right and you got you got to pay that credit card bill every single month for the ad spend right and that, that responsibility your first question right like what is it like being an operator like it's it's really just making sure your people are taken care of. You take care of a fucking people. I huh? take care of my people. <laughs> no, but like for real, like for real, <laughs> I was about like. To say that. And people have asked me the question so much, like what motivates you, like what uh, like gets you up in the morning, and yeah, like I'm excited to go in and, and play around with Zapier and send cold emails and sign clients, like that's all cool. But like, why I'm really I need there. to own five thousand units for my <laughs> my son. Yeah, exactly. I gotta take care of like. Sons, I have partners, son, right? Sun Army. Like, motivation for me is, like, me and Christian, bro, like, we were just looking back uh, at our podcast four years ago, and we're recording episodes, like, out of my bedroom in my, like, childhood home. Uh, and it's just motivating now. Like, we now moved down to Tampa, and we live, like, a really a really nice lifestyle down here. And to maintain that is, is not a challenge, but, like, we have to keep our shit together. That rent is due every month. That rent's due every month. You, you got, you know, what? I mean, what do we have now? Like, five, six people that we... I, I think between launch socials and, like, my theme pages and, and a couple of the clients I have left, I think there's, like, 15 people, whether they're independent contractors or actual employees, like, full employees, mm -hmm. that are paid every month. Yeah. And I'm, my team's, like, everybody that I have... Well, and that's not true. I have a couple other people outside of that, but yeah, like, I mean, I'm on my end between launch social stuff, it's probably like close to 10 now, yeah. eight to 10, somewhere in that range. And it's like, dude, that's like a, you, like you have to 
you know, that's 20, 30 grand a month that it's like, bro, you have to do this shit. It's, you don't have a choice anymore. You have to do this shit because other sales don't get made. It's other, coming out of my other, pocket, my investments. That other, people, away. other people are depending on you for everything, kind yeah. of, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's a lot from time to time. For sure. Um, But it's, it's exciting. Those too. moments of like high and low and whatever. And they come and go. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. Always. They, come and, they typically come and go quick. But I think it's because of like the experiences we've had and like how we're kind of built to, to a degree, just like our mindsets. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I definitely experienced that for sure. Yeah, it's dope. <laughs> what, where do you see things going after this event? Dude, so like I've never been a long term thinker per se uh, to give you some perspective with that. Right. So like I'm trying to get more into fitness now. Cause I know that's a, a, a area of my life that's lacking. And I was telling you that four years ago, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, but I know. Uh, so like one of my, the challenge that I'm doing same as last year is I want to run a mile uh, for a hundred straight days. And it's not like an, an, a tough thing to do, like run a mile. It's the consistency thing. Right. But if I think like, okay, I have 50 more days to run a mile like that's super overwhelming and i couldn't promise you that that's gonna get done mm -hmm. but what i can tell you is i'm gonna get it done today right and, and ed Milet uh recently started talking about this because he put a book out around the same theme is like the, the power of one more mm -hmm. uh so like yeah i think long term and i have an idea of where i want this thing to go but kind of like you said with the podcast like you started this thing without really the intention of it becoming this mm -hmm. and so i kind of yeah, I want to project into the future, um, but I also kind of want to leave that to almost be either designed or, 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 yeah, really designed by God. Like, I just want to show up, do do what I know how to do, Ordained. what I enjoy, and, and kind of like God take care of the rest because that's what's gotten me here today. Like, if you asked me this question four years ago, I would have gave you a bullshit answer. I would have been like, oh, yeah, I want to grow this podcast and I want to drop out of school and grow my drop shipping company to X, Y, and Z and, and none of that ever happen mm -hmm. um and and there's no regret and it's not like i'm a failure because of it it's just i showed up every day and this is where i ended up and i think it's the coolest thing so i almost kind of like to keep it a surprise in it's, a way it's super interesting yeah. because uh, and i respect that and i definitely share it but for one thing for me actually like whenever things you know you have those kind of low moments for me zooming out and seeing like you know, what does this look like when I'm 26? Yeah, I turned 24 in like a week and a half or whatever. It's like, what does this look like when I'm 26 or 29? Getting that big picture view. And I think you had, I think you had that last week when we had a couple, I was, I was back home. We had a couple FaceTimes about our business. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, I didn't really give you a full clear picture of a couple levels up of what i was thinking mm -hmm. right because they're still kind of like in development or whatever yeah it's like dude but what if we do this with the enterprise plan and this with the the high high ticket plan and you're like holy cow like this is a once in a generation like wealth creation yeah like business, it, if, if we pull it off like those the, like, when zoom, we pulled off zooming out and seeing that big picture like what this could look like and i saw as soon as as soon as we had that conversation you just got way more excited yeah way more excited yeah. about it that's i and that's another thing for me too like when i get in those kind of and it goes back to what you said about clarity to me. Like, I think like for you, that day to day, I'm going to get one more done. I'm going to do this today is your form of clarity. For me, I think see, being able to see like the the long term picture and that having that clarity gives me the excitement for the day to day. Because if I don't have that, I, and I think of like uh, like Napoleon Hill's books, you know, like Think and Grow Rich or Outwitting the yeah. Devil, both great reads, really recommend them. Um, he talks about this idea of like drifting and, uh, that to me, if I don't have that long-term big vision in my head, I start to drift a little bit. And that's, you know, like idle, idle minds, idle hands or the devil's workshop. And as your business partner, knowing that, like now I know certain buttons to press to make you more excited of like. <laughs> Just like, dude, you, fulfillment you, donkey <laughs> plus, plus 10 oh, but, stamina but, today. But no, it's important. It's important that we all stay on the same page, right? In, mm -hmm. in our business. It's super important. And I feel like I always have that really long term look of like, this is this is the big vision, et cetera. That's like one of my strengths. So I clearly see it almost every day of like, okay, this is, I know I'm building this. And I feel like that's what leads me to be very, very consistent. And like you said, drifting sometimes. 
I, next time you drift or whatever, you maybe get off track. I just I just know to remind you about this certain thing, and it keeps the whole team on track. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I think it's a self awareness thing too. Like you said, it's not a it's not like right or wrong. Um, but I'm an operator, right? And and operators, I think that we think more structurally uh, and on a day to day time scale, which is why partnering with Daniel works so well because he's a visionary mm -hmm. and he could zoom out and say, this is where we're going. And I could say, okay, this is what we need to do to get there. And, yeah. and once you have the self-awareness, it's not a right or wrong thing per se. It's just, you could have different views as long as you understand how, how they should be placed within a business. Yep. I, I think even you and I are kind of both on that more visionary exactly. side. Exactly. And we can, we almost need, like, I think we need someone like that. Like that not, day -day. not right now, but very For soon. Sure. For we sure. need that person who comes. We were in talking and, about it. You know, comes in and owns it. Wish we had Daniel. Love Daniel. What? The other Daniel. Oh yeah, facts. Yeah, bro, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> Poach Andre <laughs> from his own company. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, what do you want to leave as your final message with us? And for the, the associates of the associates for the associates of the associates man that's a good question it doesn't have to be one thing it could be a whole you know spiel rant whatever just go off on something yeah uh i mean right now like my whole thing is is this event uh and and it's not just the event i think it's what the event is gonna do uh sure. and i think what it's gonna do uh, and what people should focus on and find is is building community. Um, and I think that's what money Twitter has allowed us to do in such an effective way is build community. Uh, and when I was first starting out, that's something I didn't have. It's something we were definitely seeking, Christian and I, through our podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just we didn't have it. And I don't think we had the success that we expected to have early on until we found a community and it's not necessarily finding a community because that i think that's also the problem now that i think about it is we were trying to find a community mm. most of the time you need to build a community and mm -hmm. i think we're all capable of that so i don't know if this podcast is going to be aired before the event but to spoil the event the, it, the message yeah the exactly. message i'm going to leave at the end of our event is like yeah all you guys are going to be in the audience right like you're all attendees of this event but you're all capable of, of hosting your own event. And so like people were talking to me last night, like, yeah, like, dude, this event's sick. Like my goal is to be a keynote speaker at it next year. I said, think bigger. Like I want you to host your own event and I want to go and keynote speak at mm -hmm. your event. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about it. You want to put on an event. Yep. And so like, I think there needs to be more of that. Um, and, and so I hope to see more of it. I love it, man. I, uh, the one thing I will just, and I know that was kind of our wrap up message, but I'll just say, because I had a, I was thinking about this and tweeted about it early last week, I think, and it was like a lot of people who want to be entrepreneurs, they they think about markets, and what they really need to think about is community. Because people take from markets, but you have to give to your community. And I, I would say it's both. And the more you can, like like Andre and these guys, like you guys probably aren't. I mean, I don't. Maybe you are. I don't know, right? I don't know the numbers, whatever. But like, you're, the amount of money you're making from this is probably negligible to some extent That's with all the expenses. Negative right now. Negative, yeah, <laughs> We're exactly. Losing money. Like it's because it, I've I've done kind of the retreat model, not at this scale, but I've had people come yeah. and pay for it. And it's like, or even just like with my merch stuff, like it's really not compared to other stuff I do. It's not even that profitable. Right, but it's community, and you're building and giving to community, and and, and long term, if we want to look at it at a money standpoint, doing something like this, play. it's a long term play, and it makes you way more money long term, way more money long term. Yeah, yeah. So community is that, is that a good way to end it? That's, that's the community episode of the associates. I think that's great. I think that was a, a great episode seventeen. And um, where can they find you? Twitter. Uh, I just talked from all social media. Did you delete? Media. You deleted Instagram. Deleted Instagram. Deleted That's why you never like my posts. <laughs> <laughs> he was wondering. He's like, "What's this?" Oh. Yeah, just on. Uh, on Nick been trying to get in your DMs. Dog, you're not <laughs> answering him. Uh, Twitter at Andre Heichel Jr. Uh, I'm super active on there, uh, and I'm pretty responsive as well. Christian helps with that. Um, but yeah, Twitter is where to find me. So for sure, love it. That link will be in the description. Any other links you want will be there, and then obviously you guys can find us, me and Logan. In the description, kind of know who we are already. 
And then if you're watching the long form, go check out the short form. Some of the on clips YouTube, are really funny. IG, TikTok, whatever. Go banter with the TikTok guys, the TikTok haters. We mention that every episode because it's important. And we probably, by this episode, we may be dropping a Telegram. Um, mm. That will probably be in the description. But we'll yeah. probably have like a full launch of that maybe uh, the next episode or when we do a, a No, a I'm going to say episode. join the Telegram because right, yeah. it'll be up for join this. Join the Telegram. It link doesn't in take description. any effort. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was episode 17. We'll see you guys in the next one.